Good evening. We have two stories for you tonight about ordinary people who've unwittingly stumbled upon the unknown. In one instance, they had to turn to an exorcist for help. I'll come to that later. But first, have you ever checked your watch and found you've lost a whole chunk of time? Or tried to find a place you remembered only to discover it doesn't exist? Well, tonight we have a story of three families who are convinced that for a few hours they travelled back in time. Paranormal investigators have a name for this. They call it time slip. Reports of time slip are rare, but it has a well-established pedigree. The first book on the subject was written over 80 years ago. It does sound unlikely, but as Sherlock Holmes once said, when you've eliminated all the alternatives, then whatever remains must be the truth, however improbable. In 1993, Alf and Eileen Roberts were on holiday in Devon. It was 7.30 and they were heading back to their hotel when they got lost and found themselves in a village they didn't recognise. We were on our way back to Dunster, found ourselves lost, and we stopped by the green at the top of the village to decide which way to go. And we noticed on the green was this huge wooden sign, varnished, highly polished, saying the best kept ward for the best kept village or something of Bampton, 1976. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was so brilliant. The tubs of flowers and window boxes, everything was but just one mass of the colour. Blaze of colour. It was really lovely. Alf and Eileen eventually found their way out of the village back to their hotel in Dunster. They hadn't planned to visit Bampton, but they were so impressed by the flower display that they decided to return the next day to take some photos. Where's all the flowers gone? I don't know. This it. doesn't really ring true. As we looked through the village, everything had gone. As they headed back to the green, the centerpiece of the display, they were in for another shock. The sign had gone, the flower bed had gone, it was just grass. But all the tubs and the flower pots and the hanging baskets, everything had gone. It seems as though we'd come back or been to a village, the same village, but another time. Unsettled by their return visit, the couple remembered other strange things that had happened. On arriving in the village the first time, dropped a cigarette on to the map in the, that was laying on the floor in the car. Smoke was coming from it. Having checked that later on in the day, there was no march whatsoever, as if it had never happened. And during their journey, time appeared to stand still. As we arrived in the village, we checked our watch and it was 7.30. As we left, we checked the time again and it was still 7.30, as if we hadn't been in the village. It just seems as though it was the same village, but in a different time completely. It sounds unlikely, and yet it turns out the best kept village in 1976 was Bampton. Equally strange is the story of Cynthia and Len Gisby. They invited friends Pauline and Jeff Simpson to join them on a holiday in Spain. They set out to drive through France in the late summer of 1979. It was their first experience of life on the other side of the channel, and it was to prove an unforgettable one. Can I stop over somewhere? I'm okay. It's nice to have a clear run for a change. Yes, man, but the rest of us are tired. And hungry. And thirsty. <laughs> okay. We've been travelling from about 10 o'clock in the morning. It was getting 8 o'clock at night. And we started looking out for a motel, hotel, anything. And we thought, well, that looks a, an ideal place. A very old world place it was. we got here. Oh, isn't this quaint? This'll do nicely. Oh, I'll get the luggage. Ah, bonjour, madame. Uh, je peux vous aider. Uh, Avez-vous uh, deux uh, chambres for the rain? Ah, oui, oui, oui. On a deux chambres pour quatre personnes uh, là-haut uh, pour dormir. Uh, si. <laughs> Entrez, s'il vous plaît. Oh, merci, madame. Entrez, entrez. Entrez, madame. Vous voulez quelque chose à manger? Manger. Oh, uh, manger, 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 yeah. manger. 
Oh, what should I eat? Oh. Yes. Manger, manger. Oui. Pour s'il vous plaît. It was a, not a very large dining room. There was about half a dozen or seven tables with a little white cloth on. Et voilà votre chat, monsieur et dame. Soyez confortable. A bientôt. Au revoir. A bientôt. Au revoir. The bed was very tall with a big brown furry cover on it. And when we pulled it back, it was a feather mattress with a sheet cover. And it was very hard calico type linen. It's a bit chilly in here, love. Did you close the window? Sid, you're not going to believe this. There's no glass in the window. What? There was just one opening in the wall. There was no uh, no glass in the windows at all. All you do was two shutters you pulled in from the outside. That meal was formidable. Mm. You won't find food like that on a motorway service oh. station. Oh, that's true. oh cutlery like this. Yeah. Maybe it was made locally. And the beer? I've never tasted anything like it before. Still, I couldn't let it go to waste, now could I? <laughs> We just thought it was old rural France and had a laugh at it all. We thought it was all part and parcel of the holiday, quite funny. Mm. So we did enjoy it. But we did enjoy the food though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It was really lovely. We were so hungry. <laughs> Sam! Come in, Pauline love. <laughs> Let well then? Yeah. The boys want to take a photograph of us. Oh, fame at last. My love! The gorgeous girls are here! Hello! Well, everyone. Bonjour, Albert. While we were at breakfast, uh, these two gendarmes came in. The thing that puzzled me more than anything was the uniforms of the gendarmes. I've never seen uniforms like that at all. I think that must have been regular customers coming in for their cognac and coffee in the mornings. While we were having breakfast, a woman came in with a mauve dress on. She looked as though she'd been to a dance, very old-fashioned type. They just said they'd been to an all-night party. She looked very, very old-fashioned. Yeah. Everybody finished? OK, Jeff, if you take the bags out, I'll pay the bill. <laughs> the bill, how much? Uh, pay, eh? That's a play. An instant. An instant. Um, pardon. I asked the policeman okay. if there was a road or another exit onto the auto route. Motorway? Autoroute? I said, Avignon. Ah, mais oui, moi, maintenant, je comprends. They had no idea what an autoroute was, for my opinion, anyway. Hadn't got a clue, so we thought that was rather funny. Monsieur, monsieur, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Oh, oh, right. Oh, right. Le petit déjeuner, oui, et pour quatre personnes, non? Alors, ça fait deux, quatre, neuf, dix, neuf. Hey, Jeff, you'll never believe this. It was only 19 francs. What, breakfast? No, the whole lot. They came back and said, yeah, it's only 19 francs. They said, get off, come on, let's go. And we went. They were so impressed by the hotel, they decided to stay there again on the way back to England. Are you sure you're on the right road? I'm sure it was down this road. We turned right at the bridge. It was a right road, there's no doubt about it. Not in my mind, it was a right road. We went backwards and forwards four times and we couldn't find it. I'm positive it was here. Come on, let's go. We gave up after about four manoeuvres up and down the road. Oh. The next one cost us 247 francs <laughs> for just a sandwich and a night. The next surprise came back in England when the two couples had their photos developed. I just don't understand it, Jeff. Mm. Those photos we took at the hotel, they haven't come out. Mm. Here, take a look. They were the last shots before we went to Spain, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, hi, 
Pauline. We've just got our holiday photos back. Oh, good. Could you check something for me? You definitely took those photos, didn't you? Of course I did. I knew I'd taken a photograph and I'd seen Len take two photographs. I knew I should have had it on the roll of film that was developed. It wasn't there. You'll never guess. The strangest thing has happened. When Len's never come out, I was really surprised, shocked. It was as though we hadn't taken them at all. Just weren't there, and there was no signs of them having been there. The shock of the missing photographs spurred the Gisbys to carry out their own research. They discovered the gendarme's uniform and the dress worn by the woman dated from the 1900s. It's almost as if the two couples had travelled back in time. But why did no one comment on their car? And how did they pay the bill with modern money? With the modern currency, he accepted it. And that was it. I mean, it's always part of me. Strangely enough, bed, breakfast and evening meal for four would have cost just 19 francs at the turn of the century. And then Gisby, for one, is willing to believe the impossible. The only thing I could think of with um, all the dates corresponding is that we went into a time lapse. We went back in time. Cynthia and Len and Pauline and Jeff did return to France a few years ago to search for the rustic hotel where they'd seen two policemen in their antiquated uniforms. And in the end, they found the right road. But all the trees were much taller than they remembered. And tantalizingly, where the hotel had stood, they found the crumbling ruins of an old building. None of the locals could remember if it had ever been the hotel. But they did say the building next door had once been the village police station around the turn of the century. <laughs>